Hi there, I'm Jason Kurgison. I am running for U.S. Congress for Texas District 26. I am a conservative Christian. Uh, I actually have lived in, um, in Texas for about 35 years now, so I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, you could say a born-again Texan, but I'm also a born-again Christian. Uh, I um, am a technologist, which means uh, my whole career I've spent um, in technology. I knew what I wanted to do since I was 14 years old, so just kind of ro rode that. I love what I do. Uh, I'm also a community builder. Uh, I've built in technology, built um, communities to support various technologies. But one of them I'm actually very proud of is I created a community for churches. Uh, when I worked for a church, a uh, large church in Carrollton, um, I uh, always questioned why don't churches work together? Because they're not in competition, not like businesses. So we started calling around and uh, we built a community of church IT people initially, but that's now grown to over 500 churches and have uh, uh, really been proud of, of that growth from there. Um, but I'm running for Congress uh, for uh, not for those reasons, but for um, reasons uh, like Trump to uh, protect America. There you go. Well, I've got four questions from four different political groups here nearby, and we'll have one minute for each one. First one is from the Wise Public Party. What is the purpose of our government in the world, and what, if any, relations should we have with other countries? Well, first, I do believe in the sovereignty of every nation. So every nation has the right to, to manage their citizens. There's obviously the, the humanitarian aspect regarding how country, countries will deal with their citizens. Our role uh, for uh, as long as I've been alive and, and long before that has been to, to lead the rest of the world with innovation, um, with uh, how to grow their economies, uh, how capitalism can, can effectively improve their economies, improve the lifestyle of their citizens. Uh, regarding our role um, in in with other countries, we have to remember that uh, we have to respect their sovereignty first. But when we have friends that are uh, attacked, uh, like our, our, um, Israel was attacked recently, um, we have to consider um, stepping in and defending them, protecting them. Um, we have to ha um, do some soul searching when it comes to to what level, uh, to what degree. And there absolutely has to be accountability. There has to be transparency because that's the responsibility uh, of, of our government to our people. Very good. Our next question comes from the South Wild Republican Club. Immigration and protecting our national sovereignty are always talking points but never get solved. What would be your solution to creating a merit-based immigration system and protecting our borders? Well, first, we have to be honest about the problem. This is not a... This is not anything other than a political problem. We have one party that is interested in getting as many voters in as possible, and we have another party that believes in the American dream of bringing in people effectively as American citizens, but bringing them in not through the deserts, not dying in rivers, but across across the appropriate channels. Um, regarding our um, our path to citizenship, uh, we've always honored that, and Republicans are smeared for being uncaring. But in fact, if you look at the compassionate aspect, look for, look at those who've come across legally, and they, they talk about the process. They talk about the, the honor they feel, the pride they feel of becoming an American citizen. We want that for those who truly want the American dream. Um, regarding getting that under control, you know that there's political games being played now. Uh, we're in a different world now that President Trump has really shown us what's going on and has stood back, uh, stood up for, to it. Um, we need to stand our ground, be bold, be strong, and not let one inch uh, of, of our freedoms be taken away from us. Thank you. Uh, our next question is from the Patriot Society of El Boyd. As an elected member of Congress, you will swear an oath to the U.S. Constitution to defend against enemies both foreign and domestic. Will you author and support bills to defund the FBI and any other federal agencies weaponized against the American people and explain how you might accomplish that. Perfect question. That is one of the main reasons that I am running in this, in this race. Our freedoms are being systematically taken from us by the people that not were elected, but were appointed into office. Um, that's a frustration point for most Americans, I think. Um, the answer is absolutely. Um, I think that um, Republicans have been reticent to speak softly and carry a big stick. They're not reminding people that we have a big stick. Congress has the purse. Let's do that. Congress has the impeachment ability. Let's do that. Congress has the voice be able to speak on the various news stations that voters who are perhaps not as engaged as, as the people in this party uh, currently are that need to hear these things come out. So I believe in a very strong stance, and I believe in the ag aggress aggressive approach of here, here is our line. Um, if you've already crossed it, let's go ahead and impeach you, certain members or uh, leaders of certain departments of justice, uh, and let's move forward with um, people that will or will defund not just the programs, we'll defund the departments. Mm -hmm. Very good.
Our fourth and final question comes from the Wise County Conservatives. Based on your understanding of the U.S. Constitution, in what circumstances, if any, can a state lawfully nullify a federal action, a written law, or policy? Well, some of that could go down to Texas's right to leave the union, but we won't go there. Um, this gets to a constitutional question, which, um, frankly, um, I would need to know the specifics of in order to respond to. Um, being, a t being, being a technical person, I, I am analytical, which means I look at the evidence and I come to conclusions based upon that. With that being said, um, if, a, if a federal law is not in compliance with the Constitution, then I think the states have an obligation to press it. That's part of our checks and balances. The states can and must push back, as our, our governor certainly has. Um, regarding federal laws that um, do not violate the Constitution but violate state laws, it is still an action that can be brought up in the courts and fought. For that matter, uh, I think that the federal government's not getting enough pushback from the states to, to remind it that we are a union of states, a union of people. They need to honor and respect the people.